All right, welcome to the Minecraft Forge tutorial series for modding here for Minecraft 120.x. Minecraft modding courses with close to 100 topics ranging from custom tools and armor to custom block entities all the way to custom mobs linked in the description below. Now the X of course stands for any number it could possibly be. Right now we're already on 120.1 and you can always take a look at the description because I will always write in the compatibility whether or not this particular tutorial is going to be compatible with the newer versions. But first of all to start modding we're going to need a few things and the first thing is a JDK or Java development kit. For this, we're going to use the Eclipse Tamarin right here. This is the one from Adoptium. I will link everything in the description below as well, of course. And you're going to choose the Windows one right here. I'm just going to choose the MSI that is going to be a installer. And you can just install this onto your PC like any other program. Make sure that the add to path as well as the set Java home variable are set to will be installed on local hard drive. This should be done by default, but if it is not, you should make sure that that is the case because that's just going to make our lives a little bit simpler. Then you can hit next and install. Once you've installed, we now need a fancy text editor for, well, basically creating Java. And for this, we're going to use IntelliJ IDEA. Now I want you to pay close attention over here because JetBrains has changed their website and you have to scroll down to find the community version of IntelliJ IDEA. This one is free. This one is not free. Obviously, this is a 30 day trial and it costs quite a bit of money, but this is completely free. If you scroll down, you can download this one and this is what you need. You can see it's called Ideal C, then you know you've downloaded the community version. Similarly to the JDK, simply install this program onto your PC and then we can proceed. We don't need it quite yet, but we're going to need it in just a moment. And the next thing you're going to need is some Java knowledge. So I have the Java introduction here for Minecraft modding. This has served a lot of people quite well. They've been going through this and people have learned quite a bit of Java from this. You can, of course, use any number of tutorials or resources to learn Java. This is just the one that I have. I will also link this in the description below. But I'm just telling you that if you actually want to make some mods for Minecraft Java version here, it is incredibly important for you to at least have some amount of Java knowledge. Well, and then we can go on and download Minecraft Forge. So as you can see, right now we're on 1.20.147019 here in this case. And this is basically what you want to download. You always want to download the latest version for modding here in this case. And you want to click on the MDK. This will open an at focus link over here. And on the top right corner, you can see, please wait for five seconds. And after those five seconds are up, a skip button will appear and you can click on this. And then a zip file will download. Now I've already prepared the zip file right here. I'm just going to right click, drag it into the same folder and I'm going to extract it. And I'm going to rename it to forge-tutorial-120.x. There we go. I'm going to extract this and then we have the new folder right here. We can delete the zip file and we can go inside of it. And there's a few things to do. We can delete the readme, the license, as well as the credit and the changelog, because in this case, they are Forge specific and they are not really for our project over here. So we can delete those and then we can proceed. And then what we want to do is we want to copy this path over here and then start IntelliJ for the first time. When you start IntelliJ for the first time, something like this should come up. Your window will probably look a little bit different, but what you will have is you will have an open button somewhere on the screen here for IntelliJ. You're going to click this. You're going to put in the copied path over here. You can see there it is. You want to choose exactly this folder. So the folder where the Gradle, the source folder are contained in. You're going to choose this one with a little symbol over here and click OK. We're going to trust this project and then a new window will appear and all sorts of things are going to start happening down here at the bottom. If you expand this build over here, you can see things are going basically going to start downloading in the background. These are necessary things for Forge and your project to work. You can just let them run through any type of error or warning. We can for, ex for now just ignore. Just let this run through. Stay patient. This might take a couple of minutes. I've seen people take sometimes 40 minutes. It should not take this long. Usually it just depends on how fast your computer is, how fast your internet connection is. And also, of course, how much load is on the Forge servers, things like that. All right, there we go. Build successful in 3 minutes and 11 seconds. That's awesome. And you can see there are some warnings over here. No worries at all. As long as you get a build successful, you are pretty much good to go. This goes for all of those things. The project configuration here with the official obfuscation mappings. We can mostly ignore this warning. We can mostly ignore this warning as well. And then this one, the cannot resolve the resource filtering for match copy action. That is a IntelliJ idea warning. Once again, it is just a warning. It is not an error. When you see the triangle here, it is only a warning. So everything should still work totally fine. Some very quick debugging. What you can do is you can go to file to project settings 
And under the project, make sure that the SDK is set to 17. And then the language level is also set to 17. Under file settings, build execution deployment, build tools, Gradle. Make sure that the Gradle JVM is either set to Java Home 17 down here. So the 17 here is important or you can also set it to Project SDK 17. Either one works. However, it is very important that there is a 17 there. Also quite important, make sure that the folder you put your project into is not inside of your OneDrive if you're using newer Windows versions. I know that the desktop and some of the documents folders are in OneDrive. This does not work. Please make sure that that is also the case that it's outside of your OneDrive. And then we can start. We can start by expanding the Java folder over here and you can see we're going to get com.example.examplemod and this is the first thing that we want to do. We want to go to this little gear over here to the options under tree appearance. We want to make sure that flatten packages as well as compact middle packages is turned off. And then you're going to have everything displayed exactly like I do as well. This is just personal preference, though. You can, of course, keep it however which way you like. We then want to double click on the example mod class and you can see a whole host of things are going to be thrown our way. And we're basically going to throw out most of them right now. Line 61 or above this public example mod over here, we want to just select everything up until the logger, not including the logger, and just delete this. This will get us a few errors over here, which we can then also delete including some of the comments here. I will just format this class basically. Now you will have this available to you and everything that I write as in terms of code in the description below in a GitHub repository. So you can always double check everything that I'm doing and changing over here for you to compare to or to uh, copy over. But I want to caution you of just copying over stuff. Please do make an effort to try and understand everything that we're doing here. Because if you're just copying over, you're not going to make a mod with that. We can also delete the contents of the common setup over here. We can delete the comments of the on starting server and we can delete the contents on the on client setup over here. So we're left with a pretty bare bones example mod class over here. And there's a few other things that I want to change. The mod ID, I just want to click on this, press shift F6, and I just want to change it to mod underscore ID. There's also a personal preference. The name of the string field really doesn't matter, but I just like to have it mod underscore ID. And then we want to change the example mod mod ID. Now I'm going to choose tutorial mod, and this is extremely important. So pay close attention over here. Your mod ID is your unique identifier for your mod. That means it should be long enough for it to be unique. However, it can contain uppercase characters. It cannot contain spaces. It can only contain lowercase characters, numbers, and underscores and dashes. Please make sure that your mod ID follows that convention Otherwise, your mod will not work. We can click on the example mod class name over here and we're going to press shift F6 again. And then we're going to rename this to tutorial mod. Please note that the tutorial mod right here is different from this. This is the class name and the name of the file, while this is the mod ID. Two completely different things in this case. And also don't just rename it because if you do, then you're going to get a lot of errors over here. You have to click on this, press shift F6 and then rename it. Otherwise, it will not work. At the top here in the package, I want to change this to net.countenjo.tutorialmod. Now you're going to change this to net.yourname.tutorialmod. So if your name is John, you would say net.john.tutorialmod. You're then going to hover over this and you're going to say more actions. We're going to move this to the new package over here. And then on the left, you can see all of a sudden things have moved to net countenjo tutorial mod tutorial mod. And we can click on the com package over here, delete that. And there we go. Now, everything in terms of the class here has been set up. We can also expand the resources folder. Inside of it is a meta in folder with a mods.toml file. Now, this is not as interesting anymore because all of the Things that we have to define basically are now defined in another file, which we're going to look at in just a moment. But you can basically see the mods.toml file is important for, well, you can see it basically contains data relating to loading your mod. And one quite important thing down here is the dependencies, which are quite interesting. Basically, you can define dependencies. And that is the thing that you've probably seen. You might have seen this when installing a mod where it said, hey, this mod actually needs this other mod to work. And that is basically a dependency. But we'll not worry about that right now. What we wanted to worry about is in the gradles.properties file, changing some values right here. And those values are down here on the mod properties. So you can see, once again, our mod ID. This has to be tutorial mod. And you can see a unique identifier for your mod. It must be lowercase in English locale. And it must fit all animorphous this rejects, which basically just means it has to be between, it has to only contain lowercase characters, zero to the nine or underscore. And the name here is going to be the human readable name. This is tutorial mod. I like that. The license here is going to be MIT. In my case, the mod version, I'm going to choose 0.1-120.1. 
So basically, this is the mod version, while this is going to be the version of Minecraft that we're using. That's just the way that I'm using it. You can, of course, change it however which way you like. The group ID is net kaupenjo, or in your case, your name, dot tutorial mod. There you go. And then mod authors, well, it is I kaupenjo. There you go. And then you can also make a description right here, but you, of course, don't have to. This is a tutorial mod made by kaupenjo. There you go. And those are actually the things that we want to change. Now, another thing we want to change is the mappings. So right now, the official mappings are being used. However, we want to use the parchment mappings. The first question might come up was, why would we want to use parchment mappings? Now, the reason is actually because the parameters inside of the methods on the official mappings have no names. And that is, frankly, horrible to deal with. It is absolutely terrible to work with. And this is why we want to use parchment. I will be linking this in the description below as well. And the way that we are going to use this is we're just going to change the official here to parchment. Then we want to get this line right here. This is the maven. We want to add this to the settings.gradle file down here. So you can see on the first closing curly bracket, we want to add this line. And then we want to navigate back here again to this ID. We want to copy this ID over here. And this is going to be done in the build.gradle file at the very top over here. You can see we're going to add this ID right here. And then we only need to change the mapping version. Now the version in this case... I've already taken a look, is 2023.06.26-121. There you go. And these are all of these things that we have to change over here. So at the top right corner, we can now click the load Gradle changes. If this little elephant over here doesn't appear, you can also expand the Gradle tab and just click the reload all Gradle project button. But that's going to build again. And this is once again going to download a few things, set a few things up. So once again, stay patient, let this run through, and then we can proceed afterwards. And there we go, build successful in 1 minute, 21 seconds. Once again, all of the warnings that might happen, you can safely ignore as long as you get a build successful, everything is going to be fine. If any errors are present, please double check everything that you've put in here. So the mapping version, make sure that you've added the maven right here properly to the settings.gradle file, as well as the ID here properly to the build.gradle file. And we're mostly done with the setup over here. The last thing you want to do is you want to open the terminal, put in dot slash gradle w, gen IntelliJ runs and you just hit enter and let this run through. This will simply configure a few more things here for us in IntelliJ. It is not strictly necessary. However, it does make a lot of sense to do this once just so that we're sure everything is set up properly. You can see it finishes very, very quickly because usually everything should be set up fine. It's just a good idea to run this once. And now you can go to the Gradle tab. You can expand the tasks, expand forge Gradle runs and then double click the run client over here. And this will start the Minecraft client. So you can see we're already starting over here. It is loading. And then in a few seconds, Press there we are. To enable the narrator. We're not going to enable the narrator. And we're also going to uh, get the volume down here a little bit. There we go. But that is pretty much it. We have the mod added. You could see it. tutorial mod is added in our current version. You can see author Kaupenjo. And this is a tutorial mod made by Kaupenjo. Absolutely freaking awesome. But as previously mentioned, all of the code will be available to you in a Git repository that's always going to be linked in the description below. And once you've gone through this setup once, what I highly recommend is you make a copy of this particular project over here. Because yes, if you want to make multiple mods, then in theory, what you would have to do is you have to go through this process every time. But you, of course, also have this particular state of the tutorial available to you as well in the GitHub repository, so no worries at all. And speaking of GitHub, this is a great segue here because now I want to show you how you can upload your project to GitHub. This might be important because number one, GitHub is a version control system, basically allows you to change stuff. And then you're going to be like, hey, this is changed. It's going to take note of those changes. And if you ever break something, you can revert back to an earlier version. It's also quite useful that if you ever run into any errors and, for example, you join the Discord server and ask a question there, you can supply your GitHub repository and that is going to make everything a lot easier for us to help you, basically, because having a GitHub repository of your mod and being able to see everything that we've written, like all of the code, makes it so much easier to diagnose any issues that you might run into. So for this, of course, you need a GitHub account. I highly recommend just making one. It is a very reputable site. It is used, I mean, by professionals all over the world. And it's just a really good idea. Once you have an account, you can go to VCS over here and click on the share project on GitHub button. And you can see we're sharing this project on GitHub. Now, if you want to share this project and you're running into an issue, you want to make sure that the private button over here is, of course, not checked. Because if it's private, then you have to make it public on GitHub itself. So just be sure I'm going to publish this privately here because in this case, this is not going to be the final repository. That's just for me. But if you want to share this with your friends and or, you know, people on Discord, of course, make this public. And you can see we can share it by anything. 
but we can click on this add account over here and we can say log in via GitHub. This will open a new website in our browser. And if we now click authorize in GitHub, and if we're logged into GitHub, you can see now I got my github.com slash I'm going to share. And you can see a lot of things turn red. That's totally normal. We're just going to hit add over here. And then once it has pushed on the bottom right corner, you can click on the forge tutorial over here. And you can see now I have my repository on GitHub. If we now push changes over here. So for example, if I were to change a few things over here, there we go. Then what happens is that the class turns blue. This simply means that that changes have been detected in this particular class or in this particular file. We can now go to commit and we can say I want to add all those changes like important changes made. And I'm going to say commit. Sometimes it's going to complain about warnings. That's totally fine. Minecraft modding is real with warnings. That's just what you're going to get used to. And if I now reload the site, you can see nothing has been added. Now, the question is, why would this be the case? Because while we have committed this, we have not pushed this onto GitHub. So on the bottom right, you're going to see a little green ball over here. That means that we've committed changes that we've not pushed onto GitHub. And for this to be pushed, you need to click the little arrow over here. I'm going to say push anyways. And now one commit has been pushed. And if I now reload the site, you can see important changes made. Awesome. But that's pretty much the depth that I want to go into for GitHub over here. But it can still be a very, very useful thing to basically add to your project. And that concludes the setup here for Minecraft modding for Forge in 120x. Next time we're going to add an item. And here is the video for that. Hope to see you there. So yeah.